Welcome to the Civil and Environmental Engineering Computer Lab. The lab has the dedicated purpose of serving the ICT needs of both students and lecturing staff. The computers have the latest specialized software, namely, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, MATLAB, Revit, SPSS, and Ameson, among others. With the challenges we face with the COVID-19 virus, our lab offers remote access to our lab computers, therefore, allowing students to use our software virtually from their personal devices. The facility is equipped with a design jet plotter, and other large format printers for use by our budding architects, engineers, and construction professionals. What is geology? Also known as geoscience or earth science, geology is the study of the structure, evolution and dynamics of the earth and its natural mineral and energy resources. Geology investigates the processes that have shaped the earth through its approximate 4,500 million year history and uses the rock record to unravel that history. It is concerned with the real world beyond the laboratory and has direct relevance to the needs of society. Geologists are employed in a diverse range of jobs in many different industries. Some work in the field, some in offices and others have a mixture of both. What do we offer in this lab? 1. Mapping and field work, that includes field mapping, sampling, and geotechnical mapping. 2. Laboratory work. Lab work can include petrological studies of rocks, geochemical analyzes, and geomechanical tests. All of the tests are done using ASTM or British standards. Alright guys, so we're here in the geotechnical lab now. And this morning, what you're going to do, we are going to meet our technician, Mr. Marcus Brito, who is in charge of the lab here. And you will just give you an oversight of what the geotechnical lab does. So, Mr. Marcus. Yes, Paul. I'm Marcus Brito, the technician in Soul Mechanic Lab, Civil Engineering Department. What do we do? Run a number of tests in this lab. Well, due to the COVID, you have to have students in a, in a long while, but normally, in year one, the students come in, we introduce them to geotechnical works. The one number of tests we do seam analysis, atomic limits, compaction, consolidation, direct shear, unconfined compression, a number of tests. So, we look forward to seeing you guys. Civil engineering, and we, we welcome you and we wait patiently with the meeting with our new students. Okay, guys, so we are now in the transportation lab, and we are here with Dr. Lee, who actually helps run this lab. And we will have this introduced exactly what takes place in the transportation lab. All right. Good day. Um, as mentioned, I am Dr. Lee Leon. I am the one responsible for the Highway and Transportation Lab. This is the area where we deal with um, road construction materials as well as design for road pavements. Um, so here we look at the aggregates, which are the stones, the sand, and the binder or what we call TLA material. And we, this is where we blend them together to come up with a mix, which is for, that, that is used for the road pavement. So this is usually what the mix looks like. And that's what we call the test. Um, we also do performance testing where we look at the quality of the road to see whether we can rank it as good quality, bad quality, and so on. So it's very important. It's the livelihood of, of the, the nation or in terms of the infrastructure. You need to get from point A to point B. And this is where we deal with building or constructing the road so you can get from point A to point B or to move goods and services. All right, so thank you very much again. Okay, guys, back into the concrete and structures lab. The area that I'm standing in is known as the concrete lab. Now basically concrete is one of the most critical elements when it comes to civil engineering. So we have a special lab for that. So right now we have our concrete mix here. We have all our scales, everything here. Now we have to look at concrete not like how we normally look at it by just throwing material on the ground and adding cement, adding water and then we actually do a mixture. This time we actually have to do designs when it comes to concrete because we need to get certain strengths of concrete for certain specific structures. So this time we look at concrete as a science. So we add specific amount of aggregates, specific amount of water, specific amount of cement, and we do these mixtures to ensure that we get the desirable strength that we're looking for. So as I said, critical, we have our concrete mixture, we have our scales, company, we have the area where we store all our cement, 
we make sure all our cement stays dry and properly secured. So we have our area that we have our cement and we have storage area for all our aggregates around here. Now the aggregates have to be basically bone dry because when we actually doing our concrete mixer, we want no water in our aggregates. So that is very critical to us. So we have to make sure we get it, we store it, and we actually have them ready for when we're ready to do our mixing time. Another key critical piece of equipment is our vibrating table. Now we vibrate our concrete for one specific reason, and that is to remove air all out of our aggregates, our concrete actually, right? Because our mixer can't have um, air. If we have air in our mixer, we actually weaken our concrete. So we have all of this set up for our concrete lab. Now, if you keep walking with me, we look like concrete only for the design strength. But concrete can't go by itself out there in the actual field. So we have the most critical lab and the largest lab I believe in the university, which is our structures lab. So if our camera guy comes in here, you'll actually see what we see, say is our largest lab. All right? It's actually large enough to hold a four-story building inside of here. And we actually have a crane that could be able to lift up something just as large. Now, we do real life testing in this lab. Right? When I say real life testing, we look at the strength of our real life structure. So we add a key critical in, in key critical thing inside of it, which is reinforcement. Once we have added reinforcement to our concrete, we have made it stronger in both ways, both in compressive strength and tensile strength. So we have everything inside here just for that. We have all our steel, all our form of materials, all of that just for that specific purpose. If you realize what here, you will realize that we actually do, as I said, real life structures. So this is actually looking at a frame being done on our life size building. What you see is that we have what we know as our strong wall and our strong floor. Picture this. Normally when we cast a floor in our house, it's roughly about 4 inches thick. This floor is roughly about 36 inches thick, which is about 9 times larger than the actual floor that we do. Why do we have this? And so is our strong wall. Well, we want to ensure that if we bolt something down onto it, so you've seen a lot of quotes are grid on our floor, once we bolt down something onto it, it must be stronger than what we're going to actually test. Alright? So that is key and most important. So this floor is extremely thick. It's the only building or the only area that actually has a basement also. So we have a, we have a basement, ground floor, first floor, second floor. So we actually could do, as what we said, our life-size building. So we'll now move on to another key lab, which is our asphalt lab. Thank you. Hi, good morning once again. We are here in the Costa lab now. And I'm here to introduce to you our coastal technician, Ms. Shell Jackson. So she'll explain to you exactly what the coastal lab is about and what she does. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Shell Jackson. I'm in charge of the coastal lab as the coastal laboratory technician. So here we have we have a flume. This is a 10 meter long flume that we have water in it right now. And at the end of there, these are our wave gauges. So it's set up and run by a computer system that we have up. These are the wave gauges that are here. The wave gauges now measure the height, the water height. So when the wave runs, we will see the height of the water moving here. So these are the wave gauges that measure it. This is actually the paddle of the wave generator. And we use this paddle in order to move up and down and then we will be able to generate a wave. Right now we have an impermeable structure that is in the flume. Um, this is a ball and it is at the slope of 5 degrees. And at this 5 degrees here, we are just using, we are just looking to see how the wave run up and down the board. Next week we will show you a little bit more of, of how it works. Thank you. Okay guys, we are in the fluid lab once again. And if you just take a look on the ground, you will see exactly why we call it the fluid lab. Right now, we have a lot of pipes running through the entire laboratory. I'm here to introduce to you our demonstrator who actually handles most of our laboratory testing, Mr. Anton Ali. So he'll explain to you what he does in the fluid lab. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Anton Ali. Um, so basically, I handle all the labs in the uh, fluid uh, sub department. And in essence, what we have here today is two apparatus. One is the friction pipes, 
and the second that you see on first day is the orifice. And in a sense, what, what these two labs are about is firstly we want to quantify pressure losses. You define how diameter is changed, how the diameters affect the losses and the different materials, as well as the orifice. We highlight the fundamental concepts of hydrostatic pressure and how that affects discharge and so on. Right? So without getting into more detail, these are just two of the apparatus so, um, laboratory exercises that we would um, be doing in this field. Okay right. guys, so we'd like to thank you for introducing the lab and we are now heading over to the environmental lab. So see you guys once again. Okay guys, so we have just left the fluids lab and we are here at the environmental lab. We are here to introduce Mr. Benai Lachman, who is the technician who works the environmental lab. So, Benai, not to interrupt your test, but can you just introduce yourself to the lab? Hi, um, good morning everybody. My name is Benai. I run the environmental engineering lab. This is our lab environment. We have two stores upstairs and downstairs where we do both water and wastewater, just some of our tests that we can do. We do a lot of wet chemistry, um, as you can see from the chemicals on top, where we also have um, bench top equipment and also state of the art equipment, where we have atomic absorption units, we have UV based spectrometers, we do um, water testing, ranging from BOD, dissolved oxygen, go straight up to nitrates, phosphates, all these types of chemical analysis. Um, along with wastewater testing and we are also capable of doing um, chemical soil testing also where we do a range of tests from sulfates, nitrates, ammonium, all these things. So welcome and this is just a little take on our lab. <laughs>